Hey, Kayla, coming to you from Vietnam. I was in Canada 24 hours ago, and now I'm in Vietnam. It is 6.50 p.m. It is, I mean, 3.50 a.m. where I'm from, and I am exhausted. I am supposed to be at a family dinner right now, and I straight up walked out because I I'm exhausted. I spent the entire day today going to all my relatives house including my mom's side of the family who i haven't seen in over 10 years and my brother's like just going around like personally inviting people to his wedding and i went and my other older brother went so it was like a three of us it was this huge ordeal i went to so many houses i'm exhausted still it's still a culture shock every time i come back and they're like why are you so fat um why aren't you married and like how much money do you make and you know like being asian we, we, we hate all these questions i think even people in the west hate these questions but i especially hate these questions everyone is like oh you look so young for your age and i think the reason they say that because i actually think i look my age um but i think they think i look really young for my age because women my age in vietnam usually have at least two children and they're like hustling and working all the time and I don't have children. Um, I don't, I'm not in a relationship. So this is how I keep my youth, okay? Like kids age you. I've seen people who are like 22 have kids and they look 32. And I almost didn't make this video today. It is Sunday, we get our videos out on Sunday, but I escaped that dinner. My family's probably not very happy with me, but um, you know, I'm, a foreigner so i can use the foreigner card whenever i want if i was vietnamese this would not fly but also if i was vietnamese i wouldn't be jet lagged because i just hopped on a plane from canada to vietnam so many different variables uh i'm just like i feel like i feel like i'm on drugs because i'm so crazy like i've inhaled so many fumes today being on the motorbike um talking to ants i haven't seen in 10 years and having them just like grope my face and I had my fortune told today, girl, it was not good. Let me tell you, it was not, mm-mm, mm-mm, shouldn't have got that told. Um, no good news there. But anyways, back to your video. First off, I want to show my swag bag, girl, we gonna be matching. Those who know, know. I heard about the K-pop star's death. Um, I mean, okay, is it is it really bad that when I read that headline, I wasn't surprised? I was like, oh, like, it, maybe it's because I'm super pessimistic and it is something I wanna change, but you know, when you're like old like me, it's like really hard to change when you're older. But when I read it, I was just like, of course, I was like, of course she killed herself because like, I don't know her personally. I basically, I've never heard of her before that headline. Um, but I am familiar with the K-pop industry and everything you said, like it, the, K-pop is not easy, and if anything, it's so funny, like, I think it's so hilarious that right now we are trying to, like, put, kind of create consciousness and put it into AI, and then I feel like with the K-pop industry, it's like the opposite, like, we have these human beings that have consciousness, but then we're trying to take the consciousness out of them, like, you know, like, all the K-pop groups, um, they have this like one, two, three, and you're gonna say, oh, blah, 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 and and they try to get them all to say it at the exact same time. And you know, you try to line up five people, 10 people in a row, and you get them to say the same thing at the same time. It's really hard because we are all different. We have different timings, different backgrounds, blah, blah, blah. But K-pop stars, they they time that. They, they practice it a hundred times. It's like robots. It's literally, you're trying to take the consciousness, the uniqueness out of K-pop stars and turn them into robots that when you press a button, and you're gonna say, oh, 17 of me, da or whatever right so yeah i think that's when i say it's hilarious i use that word like ironically i don't think it's actually hilarious i think it's actually super freaky and scary and not how we should do things but um i'm also trying to win the award for like the worst lighting in two asian girls talk history because welcome to a crappy hotel in vietnam um yeah yeah <laughs> yeah no definitely that death is super tragic but yeah because i'm familiar with the k-pop industry and like what the stars have to go through i'm not at all surprised like if if i were to wake up and read like k-pop star commit suicide like every single week like a different one i would not be surprised at all because that stuff is super intense they brainwash you and they literally take the consciousness out of you 
um, at a very young age, and there's so much pressure. And you know, uh, with another Korean celebrity's death um, years ago, she left like a note that was basically like she had to do so many sexual favors just to get a like supporting position in a drama. Not even the lead, just like to be like the girl's friend or something. Like this isn't unique to only the Korean industry. I feel like for sure this happens in other industries. Um, it's probably less talked about, and maybe it's more extreme in Korea. I, I don't know. There's this quote. I forgot exactly how it goes, but it's basically like everyone is a saint when they die because like when they're alive, oh they're shitty, they're bad, they're annoying, and then when they die, they're like, oh she was such a good person. Oh she will be remembered for this. Oh she was someone's daughter. Blah blah blah. Right. So it's kind of funny. Like. We, we don't gain our empathy or sympathy or humanity back until the person or the, the thing that we're targeting loses its humanity, aka dies. Which is like like really messed up. Like why is that? Sorry, this, this is like the most ADD video ever because I'm running on so little sleep. I'm like so much stuff has happened. Um, and I'm like really like that fortune teller thing like not good like i'm like thinking about that i'm like ooh, homegirl not not happy about that reading and kind of wish i didn't ask you know but okay <laughs> so i think what i want to talk about in this video besides all the ranting is like the differences between east and west and how i just feel like i don't fit into either and i feel like this is gonna be a common thing for the rest of my life um, every time I go to Canada I feel super Asian and every time I go to Asia I feel super Western it's just like there's no place in time where I feel like I can just exist as a person without fitting into these different cultural narratives and traditions uh wherever i go because like if we're gonna be real like canadians um can be anything if you take if you take away like just the fact that i hold a canadian passport or the fact that someone holds a canadian passport um i feel like real canadian people real canadians kind of like go camping um, they play hockey, like they go hunting sometimes. And usually I find that, yeah, these are Canadian traditions. And uh, yeah, they might be stereotypes, but I feel like real Canadians actually do that kind of stuff. Whereas I don't do any of that kind of stuff. I'm still Canadian. I was born and raised in Canada. But yeah, I just feel like there's this disconnect there. And in Asia, I like look Asian, but then I act really white yeah that's just really confusing uh I recently heard about this term called third culture kid which is can be used to describe someone like me it's just like i'm born and raised somewhere where i don't look the part so i don't feel the part and i'm not treated like like i belong there but then the counterpart is like when i'm in vietnam i also don't belong here it's just like this weird identity thing and i don't know exactly where i'm going with this because I'm so jet lagged. <laughs> like my, my situation is definitely not unique. There are so many Asian Canadians and Americans and Australians and British, blah, blah, blah. What will be interesting in the future is a total like melting pot where you like can look at someone and you can't tell where they're from because like, okay, yeah, she looks Asian, but she could totally be from Sweden, you know? Or yeah he looks white but he could have been born and raised in china you know so it's kind of interesting to see where the world heads with all this globalization this video is a mess this video is a mess okay i just wanted to have this video out i did it um i can't wait to see you i am gonna be in korea in a, just a couple of days and we will have a very special two asian girls talk episode where we are united Alright, bye dude.